So public comments not on the agenda. Any? Seeing none. Uh, next item, we have elections of Planning Commission Chair and Vice Chair. Tony, what's our procedure for that? Um, just uh, a nomination in a, in a second, then we'll vote uh, for each position. So we will leave that up to. This is a one year. This yes. is a Why one don't we year. Start with who doesn't want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have conflicts fairly regularly, so I don't want to do either one. Pete, do you want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. You were sitting down there at the you end know. of the table. <laughs> We'll leave it up like to group, this group to decide how they'd like to uh, who they'd like to nominate, or Everybody take one step forward. Does anybody have any? All right, we, be, we better have a caucus now. <laughs> caucus now. Anybody have a preference? That I think you've been doing a good job. I would thus far. Yeah, I would support you. As would I. As a matter of fact, do you, do you want to? I will hereby uh, nominate. Are you do you not want to do it, Charles? <laughs> I, I, I'm ambivalent. I, uh -oh. I, I He's go either way. I don't but care. since you're in the middle seat, since I'm in that seat, <laughs> maybe you could just get up. <laughs> Appointment. It's, it's okay either way. Well, I, I will second that. Uh, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Commissioner Groner. Aye. Commissioner McGriff? Aye. Commissioner Hankin? Aye. Commissioner Espy? Aye. Chair Kidwell? Aye. All right. Motion passes 5 0. Congratulations. And Vice Chair? So we're looking for volunteers. I, I would uh, suggest Zach as a uh, good candidate. <laughs> My face goes in the furrow. <laughs> <laughs> Is he backing up? <laughs> I am a little bit. I can help uh, suggest Paul as a good candidate. I would do it, except planning commission for the city of Lake Oswego is often on the same night, and sometimes I have items. So, up to you guys. That's my issue as well. Yeah. <laughs> do you want me to volunteer? <laughs> kind of. David's not here to defend uh, I'll, I'll volunteer. I'll volunteer. I would. I'll, I'll do it. Nice. I don't have any. I don't have like Oswego do, Planning Commission yeah. meetings on the Do we have a motion? I'll second. Uh, Thanks, Zach. Uh, unless Pete's going to yeah, go. Oh, look at that. Pete got up really fast again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, Denise is nominated and second. I second. Okay. All right. Commissioner Groner. Aye. Commissioner McGriff. Aye. Commissioner Hankin. Aye. Commissioner Espy. Aye. Chair Powell or Chair Kidwell? Aye. For the oh, record, I was told that if Dan got nominated, zero. someone was going to be dying. So <laughs> I decided it was not going to be. <laughs> Usually that's how it works, though. Lori, right? you're going way back <laughs> in history very, now. He was very I clear. Know. A whole year ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, so concluding the elections, uh, the uh, hearing item for tonight is the annexation of. Uh, 1.89 acres uh, at Maple Court. Um, we have a presentation from the staff on this. Before you get started, Pete, this is a quasi-judicial hearing. So we need to do the disclosures. Okay. And I have them, and I'm happy to read them. Or well, maybe you can read them tonight, and if you could... Get them to you. Give those to me so I'd have a chance to read those in advance. Absolutely. Great. We will forward the notebook of sort of the relevant code provisions and the uh, hearing procedures to you before the next meeting. Thank you. In 1103, it's a land use application that is scheduled for tonight. A staff report has been prepared. And has been made available to the public seven days before this public hearing. Staff report identifies the approval criteria that apply to each applicant's proposal. Staff has identified the criteria which are contained in the staff report. The quasi-judicial hearing procedure that the Commission will follow is set out in state law and Oregon City Municipal Code. The hearing steps are shown on the chart on this wall. Anyone wishing to speak should fill out a speaker's card and give it to planning staff before the hearing. Speakers will proceed in the order in which their card is received. 
You should fill out your address on the card so the city will notify you of its final decision. For the public record, please begin all testimony starting with your name. Testimony and evidence should be directed toward the applicable approval criteria. If you believe other criteria apply in addition to those addressed in the staff report, identify and discuss those criteria and explain how and why you believe they apply to the application under consideration. A person may submit any written material while the public record is open on each application. Any written material received by the city staff during the time period in which the record is open will be placed in the record. Written materials submitted during the public hearing must be presented to city staff in order to become part of the record. If a person intends for PowerPoint presentations, oversized poster boards, reports, pictures, or other exhibits used in their oral testimony to be placed in the records, copies must be submitted to city staff while the record is open. They are not given to staff. They will not be included in the record. Any person wishing a continuance to present additional evidence and testimony or to keep the record open to respond to new issues must make that request before the public testimony portion of the hearing is closed. If the Planning Commission makes a decision to which you disagree, any issue that you may wish to appeal must have been raised for the consideration of the Planning Commission, City <coughs> Commission, or, Luba, or to Luba and both. Without raising the issue on the record with sufficient specificity and accompanied by statements or evidence that the city and all parties can respond, the issue will not be deemed appealable to the Land Use Board of Appeals. <coughs> In addition, the failure of an applicant to raise constitutional or other issues relating to proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the local government or its designee to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in circuit court. Uh, now I will ask the Commission if they have any ex parte conflicts, conflict of interest, bias, or any other statements to declare. Hi. Denise? Very familiar with the site, and uh, I did not talk to anyone when I went by. I'm familiar with the site, have no conflicts to declare. And as am I. I'm also familiar with the site. So I have no conflicts. Right. At this point, we will commence with the staff report. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you, Chair Kidwell and Planning Commissioners. Happy 2012 to everybody. Um, the item before you tonight is an annexation proposal of 0.89 acres. Uh, address of this property is 14362 South Maple Lane Road. Uh, applicant is Gary Bowles of the same address, represented by Sissel Engineering, who is here tonight, sitting behind me. Uh, and uh, this is a site which has uh, it's one tax lot there is a currently at one house on the property and some outbuildings there are no wetlands or water resources on the site the site currently takes access on uh, via two driveways on Maple Lane Court there is sewer water and storm sewer lines available both in Maple Lane Court and Maple Lane Road Sewer line uh, is approximately uh, 400 feet from the property, and the water line approximately 200 feet. Has a comprehensive plan, land use designation, low density residential, and currently a Clackamas County zoning of FU10, which is our future urban holding zone. And this property has been within the urban, within the urban growth boundary since 1979. There's no development proposed at this time. However, um, the application, if it is approved, uh, staff is recommending that it have a default zoning to our lowest density zoning residential designation of R10, which is a 10,000 square foot lot size zoning designation. As part of the application, the applicant included a transportation planning rule analysis, which is the statewide rule, to show compliance with uh, that rule. And if there is any impact on state roadways due to the proposed zone change to R10, then the application is required to uh, provide mitigation for that application. This property has been in the UGB since 1979. And when the transportation system plan was adopted in 2001, this property and its land use designation under our comprehensive plan was considered. 
subsequently the applicant's analysis is based on a uh, additional trips that would be generated under R10 zoning and those trips have been uh, accounted for in our TSP already and our system development charge free structure as such all the analysis that's required for this application to be rezoned to R10 has been adequate and uh, it does not require that the application submit a separate application for rezoning to R10. The annexation and the automatic rezoning to R10 is what staff is recommending occur. There's a little more detailed analysis in your packet in Exhibit 1 under the TPR analysis. And then uh, John Replinger of Replinger and Associates has reviewed the applicant's TPR analysis and found it to be adequate as well. And his comments are also in the, in the uh, exhibits. Um, I've included these scans of the application. This is an aerial photograph with photos of the site. Um, you can see it's triangular in shape. It abuts public right of way on Maple Lane Court and uh, Maple Lane Road. Um, if the property is approved for annexation by the City Commission, the uh, yeah. staff is going to recommend that the application include all of the right of way immediately abutting the property on Maple Lane Court, uh, since that is part of our urban growth management agreement with Clackamas County, is that when we uh, annex properties in from the county, that any abutting right of way abutting those properties also be annexed. So that involves preparing the legal description for that additional right-of-way as well. Um, fairly standard procedure, and it would be included in the findings. Uh, fairly flat, uh, it uh, slopes to the, from the northeast to the south, uh, southwest of the site. Uh, this is a map of the surrounding zoning showing the uh, location of the city limit line. Uh, so if this application is approved, that triangular uh, city limit line will become s straight and it would basically follow the northern boundary of Maple Lane Road where it abuts, abuts uh, Maple Lane Court where it abuts the property. Uh, adjacent zoning is R10 to the south, R10 across the property which is the pole vault barn that you see when you drive up Maple Lane Road. Um, county properties to the north and a uh, large amount of property to the southeast uh, is zoned R35 um, where it abuts uh, the uh, interchange with Highway 213. This area is approximately a quarter of a mile from the interchange with 213 and uh, uh, Maple uh, and uh, sorry Beaver Creek. <laughs> Thanks Tony. <laughs> Uh, utility lines are shown here, um, storm sewer is in red, uh, water lines are blue, and the storm, storm lines as they exist currently are shown in, in green. Uh, so the property, if it is developed in the future uh, as part of an uh, application for residential development or any other kind of land use application, whether it be rezoning, development as part of a larger parcel or any any other consideration for land use by the city we will be reviewing it for utility connections at that time uh, those connections can be made um, and are adequate to support the annexation of this site so the criteria or actually factors for approval of annexations as they're spelled out in our land use code there are seven of them. They include adequacy of access to the site, conformity of the proposal with the comprehensive plan, the adequacy of and availability of public facilities and services to service potential development, compliance with the applicable sections of the Oregon Revised Statutes 222 and Metro Code 309, natural hazards identified by the city such as wetlands, floodplains, and steep slopes, any significant adverse effects on specially designated open space, scenic, historic, or natural resource areas by urbanization of the subject property at the time of annexation. And seven, lack of any significant adverse effects on the economic, social, and physical environment of the community by the overall impact of the annexation. 
Um, and when the city commission considers all of these factors on balance, they must find there's a positive balance. And uh, with <coughs> our staff report, we've gone through and looked at each of these factors, including not only compliance with the city's comprehensive plan, but also the Clackamas County Land Use Comprehensive Plan, the Urban Growth Management Agreement that we have with Clackamas County, Metro Code 309, and the applicable revised statutes. And uh, the application is consistent with all of those. Um, we do not see any adverse impacts from the annexation. And any uh, impacts to the uh, social, physical, economic, or environmental quality of the uh, city are uh, negligible. Um, at the time that a development proposal is put forth on this property, we'll be looking at it in more detail. There will be further analysis uh, based on that application. But uh, since the size of the parcel is only 0.89 acres, um, if so if any rezoning on this parcel will have a negligible impact on the city's ability to serve it. There is one exception where we uh, look at the police service coverage availability for all of the city, citywide, based on an analysis that has been done starting, in, I believe, in 2005 when annexations were sent to the police department. Police department reported back saying they have inadequate police staffing to cover newly annexed areas. They recommended, based on working with planning staff, a schedule of supplementary fees that would allow their police service response time to serve newly annexed areas. And since 2005, that uh, applicable fee, depending on whether it's residential, commercial, industrial, otherwise, has been put forward as an agreement between the city and the applicant for annexation in response to inadequate police response times. And this application is no different, even though it is very small. Um, we are treating it the same as all other annexations. And uh, the applicant has been made aware of this and has actually put forward as a proposal in their application uh, the same proposal that other annexations have done. Um, and that is included as uh, Exhibit 6, which is the uh, supplementary fee for police. And let's see. So with that in mind, uh, we've prepared both a uh, set of recommendations for the City Commission to include, and those are, these are included on page 23 of the staff report. <clears throat> We've, staff has found that the annexation demonstrates a positive balance of the factors set forth in section 1404.060. Based on the study and the proposed findings and reasons for decision for this annexation, staff recommends that the City Commission set AN 1103 for ele election on the May 15, 2012 ballot, recommend withdrawing the territory from the county service district for enhanced law enforcement as allowed by state statute, concur with the Tri-City Service District's annexation of the subject property in the enacting ordinance upon voter approval of the city's annexation. Not recommend, we're recommending not withdrawing the property from Clackamas Fire District number one, and we recommend accepting the applicant's offer for a solution to the police funding shortcomings as identified on Schedule A, police funding fees for AN 1103, which is Exhibit 6. And we recommend that the property be automatically rezoned to R10 single-family residential upon approval of the annexation by the promoters of Oregon City. And Exhibit 9 of your packet is the proposed findings, reasons for decision, and recommendations. Um, one thing I did not mention was the comments we have received on this application. We only received comments from uh, Clackamas River Water, who have no c conflict with the application. Their recommendation is that uh, the City Commission concur with the, their recommendation that the property be served by the City and withdrawn from CRW. Um, if any future water lines are constructed to serve the property by Oregon City on Maple Lane Court or Maple Lane Road. 
Currently, the property is on CRW uh, well water, I believe. And uh, items 1 through 14, starting on page 24, are the proposed findings, which are Exhibit 9. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you have that I've skipped over or if you need further details on. But thank you. Is that your presentation? That's my presentation. Um, are there any questions for Mr. Walters? Yes, sir. Um, Pete, could you elaborate a little more on the, uh, I'm not sure what we want to call the document, the fee for service, I guess, with the uh, Oregon City Police Department? Okay. Uh, this is a, a supplementary agreement that basically assures that adequate response time can be provided to various types of development when it occurs. Mm -hmm. The fee is paid with a building permit um, and uh, kept in a line item budget and which is monitored by the finance director of, of the city. and. Uh, to date, we've included the same supplementary agreement with every annexation that's been before the, com the Planning Commission and City Commission since 2006. I know there are some questions about whether that agreement assures is, is uh, up to date based on current response times. And our, pl our police department was forwarded the application. and. Um, they don't have any objection to the supplementary agreement. They see it's an agreement that assures that the service is provided citywide as opposed to an individualized area. Um, and uh, it's for residential, it's based on not the mm -hmm. unit. Mm -hmm. um, for any other kind of development, it's based on square feet. And uh, the legal wording of that document is all provided in Exhibit 6. Um, yeah, I, I saw yeah. that, and it has a says if it's not annexed by January one, the right. it's void. So obviously, yeah, we need to change the change date that, on that yeah. so that it. it is, so uh, what? Mm. So let me understand a little further, since I haven't been on since two thousand six. Mm -hmm. Does that go? Does that pay for additional staff? Does that pay for additional service? I believe it's to provide for office Sir, office of coverage. Coverage, okay. yeah. Yeah. That's what I was assuming, but I didn't want yeah. to assume. Are there other questions or comments? Well, just to follow up, what's the current ratio? Do you know the current ratio of police to citizens? I don't know. It's okay. not good. Sorry, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, uh, can I ask a question about the UGMA? It's, it's probably a lot like Lake Oswego's where I work, and um, it's way outdated, and there's probably a lot of need for um, changing that. I was just curious if you guys, when we, when the city of Oregon City annexes streets, do, does the entire street get annexed, and does all of the maintenance jurisdiction and everything, does it become the city's to maintain and hold and keep process well the annexation of the right of way is required to be part of the annexation yeah the actual jurisdiction of it is transferred over to the city and i believe all of maple lane road jurisdiction that's in the city currently has been transfer transferred to the city so well i guess yeah, yeah. so so we do that we do the paperwork annexation where we annex it to the city the jurisdiction remains with clackamas county until we reach an agreement with clackamas county for that transfer to incur right. which includes right. mm -hmm. um usually a fee or work that clackamas county needs to do to bring those those streets up to a standard that the city is willing to take over that's so what I was wondering. it's just right now there is no jurisdictional transfer it is just the the city line moving uh -huh. so that it comes within the city right. and then we work on identifying county roads that are in within the city limits once a certain majority of the properties adjacent to it uh, come into the city at which point then we work on if they're going to upgrade that road with usually paving or if they're going to pay us to take it over okay so it's a two-step process that's great and I was just wondering I was reading through the report and I kind of noticed that 
with the various service districts, which I'm sure you guys have um, memorandum of understandings or, or um, agreements with, when you annex the property, usually you retain some of the ones like Clackamas County Fire District number one, or you get rid of some of them like the Clackamas County Enhanced Sheriff District and that kind of thing. Why wouldn't you just do that in one action as a part of this staff report moving forward to the city commission? I believe some annexations or removal from service districts require action by that service dis district. Right. And some of them are spelled out by ORS yeah, uh, as to which ones we can automatically withdraw from. But, I mean, do they have ORS 195 agreements that where you can do that? or We're not aware of any of those agreements. It's either spelled out in our staff report or mm -hmm. through the UGMA, okay. which is a fairly old document. Yeah. So um, the way it, we've been doing it is individually with each staff report making a recommendation and then a re or a recognition that okay. that will be done after the approval. Okay. I was just yeah. curious. And yeah. then um, the school district boundary, is there what, oh, is there a parity with the school district boundary and the city boundary, or is there? It's bigger. Yeah. Is it bigger? Yeah. Big. Yes. Okay. District. Our district um, is bigger than the city limits. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And then yeah. finally, if you guys, if the developer or the owner of the property decides to develop, I know that they'll connect to sewer. But what if the septic fails? Will they also be required to connect to sewer as well? Yes. Okay. All right. That's it. Any other questions? Um, I, I had a couple, and it, it, they kind of follow a little bit on the line of what Paul was uh, talking about. Uh, the the map that's on staff report uh, uh, page three yes. uh, shows the uh, the triangular uh, shape of the property, and there, there's um, kind of a linear strip uh, between mm -hmm. the property and Maple Lane Road, mm -hmm. and I, I wondered, is that included in the annexation? Uh, that is already within the city, that linear strip of land, but I believe it's ODOT right away. Okay. Yeah. And so um, I don't believe that we would do a separate annexation of that parcel. It's already within the city, um, and then how we go about improving the frontage on that would be determined at the time of development proposal. Yeah. Okay, so that, that yeah. strip is already within the city. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, do we have a, a report from the applicant? Could I ask Tony a quick question before we go on? Is there a way to flip this map because it's sideways on yeah. what I'm looking at on my? And I sorry, there isn't. And I didn't see any way to kind of go like that to it. No, what happened with Exhibit One was I had to load some things at the last minute no and they flip they're flipped okay. around. There's a way to put it on the overhead if yeah. you like, and we could sw switch the monitors to the overhead. My fellow person here has the. If I switch over to the zoning map on the oh, on yeah. the PowerPoint, yeah, I have that one. That you can see. Okay, I just was looking yeah. at the ones that were in the uh, report and. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So you're on the zoning map. Okay. How's that? And could you flip to the 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 topo? Yeah. One that you had. That one. Yeah. I thought that would be easier. Yeah. Mm -mm. It's it's more, more of this one. It was the one in their packet that's um, that we can't we can't see. Okay, that's great. Okay. I had like a second to look at that one, but yeah. Yeah. So this shows the elevation at the northeast end of the corner, about four hundred and fourteen feet, mm -hmm. and four hundred and eight at the bottom end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there a uh, uh, presentation by the applicant? All right. We can't tap on that unless he does, huh? Yeah, you're just looking at his screen. Screen, right? okay. That's still good. That helps. Oh, 
Hello, my name is Adriana Kovacevic, and I'm a PE registered in Oregon, professional engineer, and I work for Sissel Engineering, located at 375 Portland Avenue in Gladstone. Uh, my client, Mr. Bowles, and the applicant for this application uh, has a pinched nerve and is unable to attend the meeting tonight, so I'm speaking on his behalf. Um, thank you, Pete, for the presentation and we have reviewed the staff report and the conditions and we don't have any objections to that. Uh, the applicant wishes to bring the property into the city to potentially increase the value of the property for his retirement planning and he'd like some options available to him. Uh, one of the options that was discussed was the possibility of dividing the property. The, the most the maximum amount of parcels that would be allowed would be three, although only two would most likely um, be made due to the triangular shape of the property. Two would make more sense than three. Um, with that being said, though, the applicant most likely would not be subdividing the parcel due to costly frontage improvements that are typically associated with um, partitioning the land. If the annexation was approved and if the applicant or its successor of the property wanted to build something other than what was allowed for an R10 zoning, um, a new application would be needed for a zone change and that zone change would then need to be reviewed uh, by the city um, at that time. The annexation for this property also makes sense for the city um, because it would create a more natural boundary. Um, as you can see there, it's kind of zigzag in shape and it would just have the boundary flow better uh, with property designation and also utilities um, and services. The areas around the site are R10 zoning and those neighbors are using the city services and so if it was if the property was annexed um, it would be matching those other neighboring properties that have access as well uh, the applicant does accept the police services agreement for the property if it were to develop and the applicant also accepts item number 14 that was an additional finding in exhibit 9 in closing, we are requesting the Planning Commission recommend annexation approval to the City Commission. And that closes my presentation, if there are any questions. Are there any questions for the applicant? Yes. Why now? If they're not planning on subdividing, then why bring it in now? I mean, it's it's possible. Um, I know the applicant is getting close to retirement. I think he just wants some trying to plan for financial security if he should decide to do so in the future. But I think he's just trying to think ahead at this point. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Charles, I have a, one more question for Tony or Pete. Go for it. Could you just remind me when we, when we, the city, receives an application for annexation, do the parties that are requesting the annexation pay for the <coughs> annexation election? If it's, if it's a non-primary uh, year, so whenever you have a, a primary or a general election, mm -hmm. those go on to the ballot. Um, and they don't pay the election costs. Mm -hmm. If it's any other, if it's an off oh, year, year, they pay, okay. they pay the full election fee. That's so that's why we're shooting for May of 12. Because this is a correct election year. Okay. Yes. There are some, I think, minor costs. but. Mm -hmm. um, and do we still charge an annexation fee? Yes, we do. And if that is? For the application itself? Yes. 3100 300, I think. It's a little yeah. over three thousand <coughs> thousand dollars yes. I'm your member. We've always charged a fee, but I just didn't know what it was these days. 
Okay, so uh, I guess we're, we're to a point where the, the public uh, portion of the hearing is concluded. We don't have any any comments for the, from the public? There's no rebuttal. Okay, so uh, is there any uh, discussion among the uh, commissioners? <laughs> Any thoughts, concerns? I guess the only thing that, that continues to trouble me about these, and it's a broader issue, is, is the inadequacy of police services. And I don't feel that $3,500 is going to really cut it. It's, it's a bigger issue in the sense that we've known as a community for a long time that we do not have adequate police services, but yet... <coughs> We keep getting requests for annexation, and I'm not saying let you know let's let's put the gate up and stop everybody. But it seems to me that there's got to be a better solution than piecemealing this. And I guess that's what troubled me about the previous annexation that that we reviewed since I've been on the commission. And I I'm not really sure that I I'm comfortable with that. And I know the city commission is is probably in somewhat the same quandary because that that that's a big issue and as, as our community of course gets bigger and you know it doesn't matter if it's one acre or 20 acres there's still still that it's just sort of a nagging feeling that I kind of have about that sure that continued adding to uh, city's responsibilities and, yeah, services. and even if it doesn't develop today you know it's going to develop at some point in time and I know that the City Commission there are several city commissioners that this is one of their priorities is to try to come up with a solution for adequate, you know, police services. Uh, I had a question for you, Tony, or, or uh, wh whoever is appropriate. The, uh, it, it's related to exactly what Denise is talking about. Right now, we're looking at a, a 0.89 parcel. If it were to be subdivided, uh, potentially into three or four. Uh, smaller parcels uh, does that have any effect on uh, the the level of services and and any fees involved there um, for f so you know. in other words if, if right now we're looking at one parcel and right now it's only appropriate for a single family house right. but if you were to subdivide it uh, hypothetically into four pieces uh, would that Elevate it to a, a different level in terms of its uh, requirements to pay fees for services. Well, you so for you know at, at point nine acres in zoned R10, you, you mathematically can can get about three realistically because of the shape of the site you're looking at two. So you have one existing home and you would have one new lot and you'd go through the subdivision process. You'd pay system development charges, uh, water, storm, transportation, parks, um, bike ped would all be based on the new building permit that's applied for. If they were to come in and request a zone change to a more dense zoning, such as R6 or R3.5 or some type of a commercial, you'd be back in here in front of the Planning Commission requesting either a zone change or a comprehensive plan amendment and a zone change, at which time you would look at what those impacts are. But um, only new development, other than, the, the, other than bringing it into the city and getting the extra uh, $4.16 per thousand in tax revenue, um, and then you uh, you have your um, pavement utility uh, pavement maintenance utility fee, which would would become due as well. So those are all based on each new housing unit. Mm -hmm. um, so those would be the only impact fees that would be associated with new development on the site. So is that kind of the question you were? Yeah, I, I okay. think so. And so. So the existing dwelling is well, only going to pay those when they connect. Correct. Pay some of the fees when they connect, which correct. is what I was. Yeah. Correct. Yes. But adding additional units would incur additional fees. Correct. For for new development, yes, you'd have your assistant development your fees plus your new your new city tax rate plus your any other utility fees that may be applicable. Right. So I, with the R10 zone, the most that they could develop at, at this time would be three dwelling units. Yeah. So let's say 0 0.9. You know, that's roughly what 36,000 square feet at R10 minimum. You need a minimum of thirty thousand square feet. It's a it's a tough site because of the configuration, um, but that's mathematically what you'd be looking Wouldn't that at. Be a minor partition, yes, as mm -hmm. opposed to a subdivision. Mm -hmm. yep. Less fees. Yeah, I mean, when you're doing a partition, you not only have to meet the minimum lot size, but you have to meet minimum lot width, minimum lot depth, and uh, various other things, and then you have setbacks to take mm -hmm. account of. Right. 
So we would look at that at the time the partitions proposed. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that's in the future. I understand that. Are, are we looking for uh, action on this tonight? Uh, that, so we, we we should be looking for a motion. Yeah. So either. Um, if you, unless you need more information to continue it, uh, either an action to recommend approval or denial to the City Commission for their consideration at the January uh, we say 18th. Uh, yeah. May, uh, yeah. Planet City Commission is uh, February 1st uh, when they will be considering this, and uh, uh, that will be their first, first hearing. So. so okay. I'll move to. I, yeah. Move. I'll move, move to approve uh, annexation in 1103. A second. Commissioner Groner? Aye. Commissioner McGriff? Abstain. Commissioner Hankin? Aye. Commissioner Espy? Aye. Chair Kidwell? Aye. All right. Motion passes. So I have a question. So potentially in May, are we looking at? two to three annexation requests on, on a future ballot? We'll have two. I don't know what's yes. the timing on the third one. Um, I'm not sure if that one will make it. Well, I think we'll have two. We'll have two. this, and then we'll have uh, the Ziegler mm -hmm. ballot okay. coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, second, the third annexation that we've reviewed is not going until November okay. because they need to include a transportation planning okay. rule analysis with it. Thank we don't you. have that yet. Thanks, Pete. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, thanks. So our next item on the agenda is a presentation uh, from Eric Underwood. Is this is when we go, hi, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> So Eric, how's it going so far? So far, so good. Everybody treating you well? Yeah, yeah, so far. So 30 days, 45 days in counting? Months. Hopefully he's not counting. He can't. He's too tired to count. <laughs> We get to see everything, huh? Don't look at it. <laughs> Bye, Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> That's where the thumb drives come in handy. I think that's what he's on. Huh? That's what he's looking at. He has a lot of stuff on his thumb drive. Yeah. I want to check out the My Music. I saw a Porsche. <laughs> How many gigs you saw got on Porsche? Porsche. <laughs> 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 yeah. Who killed the rivers? <laughs> Let's go to your music. Yeah. But I was just saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any on mine either. I keep that on a separate thing. <laughs> yeah. So, hello, my name is Eric Underwood. I'm the new economic. Hi, director. Eric. <laughs> I'm uh, about seven weeks out of the box here with Oregon City and uh, settling in quite nicely. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come before you tonight and uh, kind of give you an overview of uh, what I'm working on, what I plan to be working on, some of my goals for the coming months. Uh, Hard to hear you. Make sure your uh, button's switched on on the bottom of the mic. There you go. Is that? Okay. I um, thought I'd give you a, a 
just a brief overview of what I'm going to be working on over the next few months as far as uh, setting up an economic development program. Uh, so this is my work plan here. I've kind of set it up into four different categories, uh, being the assessment of the current economic and business environment uh, for Oregon City, uh, regional state involvement, economic gardening, and local coordination. Under the first category, uh, the assessment of current economic and business environment. I think it's important to get the lay of the land, so to speak, and understand um, the economy here in Oregon City uh, before I step foot in, into moving forward uh, with a program. Uh, and so in order to accomplish that, um, I plan to talk with stakeholders, which I've, I've been doing quite a bit the past few days, uh, getting familiar with the uh, city staff, uh, the governing boards, the Urban Renewal Commission, uh, outside agencies, business and property owners, um, the Downtown Association. I've been trying to get out and about and tour some sites and facilities. Um, I have a goal to um, tour five, at least five industrial facilities. I've toured a couple already. Uh, just get familiar with what's out there and what's being marketed. Uh, getting familiar with the commercial businesses, uh, primarily downtown. I have a goal to visit at least 12 of those. I think I've uh, reached over half that goal thus far. So what about the Planning Commission in terms of stakeholders? Oh, you guys are one of them, definitely. <laughs> um. <laughs> You're on the special list. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. thought that. I thought as much. We're on the special <laughs> list. <laughs> I'll go back and make a revised <laughs> <laughs> Um <clears throat> It's important to get familiar with the current plans and codes, uh, one of them being the Cove, uh, the Rossman Landfill property, and their property owners, Downtown Main Street program, uh, Urban Renewal, of course, and uh, the Future Strategy, which uh, I plan on proposing a uh, starting discussions with the Commission to update that strategy since it, it was 2006, last time it was updated. Um, so it needs some uh, revision, I believe. Different climate, then. And it isn't it a different yeah. climate? Um, <clears throat> category two would be regional and state involvement. Um, I think it's important to stay abreast of what's going on regionally in order to align our local efforts with the regional efforts uh, since we are competing in a global economy. Um, I think the same goes for the state uh, coordination efforts. Um, and in that note, uh, I have uh, since gotten city involved with Greater Portland Inc. It used to be known as the Regional Partners for Economic Development. It's a regional economic development group uh, that's now made up of both public and private sector uh, promoting the region uh, for economic development. And this goes across the ocean, basically on both sides. Um, so uh, Oregon City is now a member of that group. Um, <coughs> I think it's important to stay in tune with Metro and their efforts, the 2040 uh, plan, staying in compliance with that, um, and then staying in sync with their coordination on the uh, Blue Heron property. And reaching out to Clackamas County, I've done so. Um, we set up regular meetings with the County Economic Development Department. Um, so and how are those going? The first one went great, yeah. But, uh, we, uh, we've, uh, the first meeting, we've, we tossed a lot, around a lot of ideas and ways that we can partner. Uh, both sides are enthusiastic about the, the partnership, and, and we look forward to a, a good relationship and getting some things done together. Who's that staff over there now? That's Catherine Cromer. 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 Over there. Because yeah. I know Renata left. And right. She's with is it just her? Uh, no, there's Jamie Junk okay, over there. Jamie. And uh, there's Gary Barth. And uh, Cindy Hagen is another name. Um, and I've worked with them uh, indirectly in, in uh, Greater Portland Inc. Regional Partners and so forth. So I, I come in with those relationships uh, currently. Um, Business Oregon Department, uh, they'll be helpful uh, when it comes to us receiving state leads, um, that being uh, folks outside the region who are interested in possibly locating here in Oregon City. Um, they'll filter their, uh, their needs and desires uh, for sites uh, through the business development team and uh, they'll feed them to us and we'll be able to put
proposals together uh, to try to entice them come, to come here. Uh, and then we'll work closely with them as far as leveraging uh, their incentive programs as well. Um, the Oregon Economic Development Association, we have, as of last week, we've become a member of that organization. Uh, this will help us stay abreast of legislative matters concerning economic development, as well as um, provide us best practices uh, in economic development and training. Can I ask you another question before you flip off of that? What about the um, Association of Oregon Urban Renewal Agencies? Are we Redevelopment agencies. Yeah, are, we, I, are we a I'm member of that? currently looking into that right now, yes. More to come on that. Category three I've listed is economic gardening. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the term, economic gardening is uh, what I like to call a non-traditional approach to economic development. Um, its focus is more on the existing businesses or companies that you have here in the jurisdiction rather than focus on recruiting from outside the area. Um, I think this does well to help create that business-friendly environment that uh, we're trying to establish here um, take care of your own, so to speak. Um, this is uh, a grant, a federal grant, that we've leveraged through Greater Portland, Inc. Uh, that provides us access to information typically uh, only accessed by Fortune 500 companies. Um, these businesses that we're targeting for ec with economic gardening uh, have to be stage two, tier two, which means they're not entrepreneurial, they're not startups, and they're not the Nikes or the Intels of the world. Um, they have to have shown stabilization or strength during the downturn of the economy, and they have to have an export component as well. So we would uh, meet with these uh, companies or businesses, uh, try to learn about their, their desires for growth and expansion, uh, take that information, go back, uh, retrieve uh, this information from the database for them, customize it in a package. Uh, deliver it to them, uh, which will help them establish new market leads, um, marketing strategies, um, possible possibilities of different or expanded product. Um, it's the the list is pretty much endless. So it's however the, the company wants to grow. Is that primarily manufacturing? You said there's an export co component. Um, a lot of the, the companies on the list are manufacturing, but there are others that you probably wouldn't normally think of as traded sector, like um, there's a company here in town called Funnelbox yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that uh, creates media. And we know Rob. Yes. And so they're, they're a prime candidate for economic gardening. Um, they do have that export component, and they are considered a stage two okay. company. You know, Paul, we could look at, you know, small manufacturing, um, outdoor apparel, and particularly, I don't know why, but all of a sudden, everybody's making custom bicycles, and it's a <laughs> big, big thing right now, mm -hmm. but they're small shops. There's not anybody that's big, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, handmade, and then there's the guy, I guess you, if you saw the paper recently, the guy that makes wooden sunglasses. Yes, I've talked with him. <laughs> Schwood, I think, is the name yeah. of the company. It's a pretty interesting process. It's actually four pieces of wood pressed together. Together, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, category four I've listed is local coordination, which I think is a staple of a, of a solid economic development program for any jurisdiction. Um, <clears throat> so it's important to connect with the uh, property owners of Rossman Landfill, which I've done. Um, I've talked with the property owner as well as their, um, I guess you would call them staff. They've hired uh, some consultants to help market that property. Um, so we're developing a partnership there as that moves forward. Uh, the Cove, stay in uh, contact with, with those developers and property owners. And of course the downtown uh, group, the Main Street program, in delivering their uh, the incentive programs that we have for that area, such as the storefront and the rehab program. I've connected with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I've actually asked them to partner with me on the Economic Garden, Gardening Initiative. Um, I like to have that uh, private sector component to that rather than have the government show up at a company's door and say, hey, we've got this new program, we're the government, we're here to help. It doesn't work so well. 
that much anymore. It's good to have that private sector support with you uh, going in, and I feel that, that that's very helpful. Uh, they're, they're willing to do that. Uh, we're going to be talking about that at the GEAC meeting, the Government, Econo Government and Economic Development Affairs Council meeting or committee meeting tomorrow. I plan to attend their business events, uh, the Good Morning Oregon City, ribbon cuttings, after hours events, and all, any of the other functions that uh, I would be needed at. And, and when does the cloning start? Yeah, huh? The cloning? The cloning, yes. Um, I'm up in my office right now, actually. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <clears throat> heritage and history, I've listed that because I feel like uh, Oregon City has so much heritage and history here, and that is a uh, unique component to this city comparing it with other jurisdictions in the metro region. Uh, I think it uh, is an opportunity to uh, capitalize on that and promote that. And, and make Oregon City unique in that way. So I plan to connect with the uh, Willamette Falls Heritage Area Coalition. Actually, as of our last uh, commission meeting, um, I've been appointed the alternate to sit on that board. Uh, so I'll be meeting with them regularly. Um, working with them, I hope to create a marketing strategy based around, on the history and the heritage of the city and try to identify different strategies and funding mechanisms to help them along in their efforts. Okay, so back up since that's one of my basic interests. So you are you talking about a marketing strategy for Oregon City's history beyond the Willamette Falls Area Coalition or just what they're trying to do? Beyond the Willamette okay. Falls Coalition, yes. I think uh, there's a lot more history. Well, we would hope so, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So I think there's an opportunity to make the city a, a, a destination uh, for tourism here because of the, the history and, and what, the amenities that we have here. Well, it kind of is, but we need to figure out how to get them to stay. Yeah. I mean, we have enough things to see and do because we are, you know, the oldest incorporated city west of the Missouri River, and we have a lot of the real history that's actually still here that's authentic. So it's not like we're trying to recreate something. It's a matter of how to get them to, you know, stay and have lunch and, you know, do a little more shopping or go see the elevator or go to the antique mall or friends of the library and, you know, walk over to Carnegie, those sort of things. I mean, it, it, to me, it's, it's, it's already here. It needs to be more refined. And I know that um, through my volunteer work at the McLaughlin House, they have lots of information about other places, you know, where to stay, where to eat. Um, I can't tell you how many times when I'm taking my walks on the weekends, it's, oh, where's a good place to eat, you know, and mm -hmm. you tell them, you know, if you want to walk to it, it's here, or if you want to drive a little further, you can go here, and, you know, a lot of that's, that's right. here, but I don't think it's been necessarily actively promoted, is what I would kind of say. I agree. And you've looked through all your looks. Well, I believe that's definitely an opportunity and something that we could capitalize on. Um, uh, working on forming those partnerships between the city and, and the folks that are involved with the, uh, the history and, and the tourism aspect. And I think, you know, not to belabor the point, but I think it's good to have um, a neutral party. There, there has been some dissension in the ranks, and it's very difficult to get some of the partners to think beyond their own four walls or their own site and to try to understand how there's a lot of mutual benefit to each other and that has been tried in the past and I'm sure you've probably heard about it or you will hear about it and I think nobody that I'm aware of wants to go back to that previous model because there's still unfortunately a lot of what I say, hurt feelings is the best way to describe it. Um, baggage. Yes, baggage. That would be a good way to say it too. And so we, have, I think, there's an opportunity to try something different, but but be aware that there still is a little bit of distrust out there. And I think that you present a nice, fresh face <laughs> that doesn't have any baggage. Well, thank you. <laughs> and it will be, it'll be good. Uh -huh. 
and I'm certainly going to put out the word to the people that I work with that there's potential opportunities there. Thank you. Um, uh, business. I have listed business developers and, and property owners, um, and I've talked with the chamber uh, with this as well. But at, eventually, I'd like to host a economic development or business summit roundtable. Um, the intention there is to get the companies, and businesses talking to each other, uh, and eventually have knowledge sharing opportunities. Um, just knowing who their neighbor is and how they may be able to supply or work with, with other businesses in the community. Um, <clears throat> on that note, uh, I plan uh, to try to organize a, a business task force uh, that would be cons consist of, our task would be general uh, business visits uh, to learn more about the business community and see what some of their needs are to assess their needs and um, also uh, find out, you know, the businesses who aren't so happy, and if, if they're thinking of leaving, maybe it's a kind of a, a, a retention effort there um, that we could take part in to try to keep them here in Oregon City. And I think uh, one of the focuses when I came into this position, uh, one of the things that I saw that Oregon City doesn't have is, is an inventory of business opportunities, both commercial and industrial. Um, I believe that's important to establish. I'm working on establishing that, working with brokers, uh, trying to get an inventory of all of the opportunities that we have here in the city and to help promote those opportunities via the website or any other media um, and just word of mouth and, and meetings and being out in the region and Is with the state. Is that an opportunity for GIS, Tony? It could be. It could be. Yeah. yeah. But right now I'm working on a, a new web page that will house that inventory um, where you can click on the property, know what the zoning is, see a, an aerial photo, a map, uh, and then have contact information for that as well. Um, so that's that's going to be an ongoing effort. Mm -hmm. um, do you get any requests for, or do you anticipate getting requests for things like um, demographics? I mean, it's, that's one of the things I'm working on right now. There's some <coughs> property that we're look, that we're an area of property we're looking at and one of the things that that we're investigating is that we've been able to through an agreement access some of the state of Oregon's employment data so we know about you know how many people work there we know approximately what um, you know rent rates lease rates those sort of things I mean there's certain things that as a governmental agency we can have privy to but we are not allowed to then give that information it's only for our use in-house but we can manipulate the data so you can show basic things so one of the things we get was you know what what is you know we're working on a grocery store initiative so one of the things we've gotten is you know what are the demographics within the the market area that the grocery store is looking at you know and of course when new seasons goes in they want to know how many people have college educations what age they are if they have kids I mean it's it's much more comprehensive, and I'm not working on that particular part of it. I'm doing stuff with manufacturing. <coughs> so it's just, and there's an initial for it, and I can't, I just looked at it today, and it's like O-R-P-E or something. I can send you an email and tell okay. you what it's called. Okay. But it, it um, they've changed the name over like the last 10 years. Every, about every five years, they change the name of what that database is called. Okay. And you basically sign a confidentiality agreement with the state employment office to get some of those pieces of information plus coupled with the census data you can slice and dice. Okay. Well I, I've worked with the state um, in compiling a lot of that information for Oregon City and we do have that on a website called OregonProspector.com mm -hmm. and Charles you might be familiar with that. Um, being a member of uh, Greater Portland uh, we're able to populate that website uh, with available industrial sites here in the city. Um, along with that, it has uh, interactive maps, uh, aerial photos, and it has demographics. It has um, regular demographics. It's got consumer demographics. Exactly. It's got uh, several categories of, of demographics for Oregon City. Perfect. And um, it's there. Um, 
maybe someday I can come in and give you a presentation on Oregon Prospector just to show you what's what's out there. But that website targets site selectors internationally directly, mm -hmm. and it, it's the it's the information that site selectors are looking for, mm -hmm. and it's right there at their fingertips. The second effort in that information that I, I plan on getting out is uh, what I call what I like to call a um, a new business toolkit, mm -hmm. which is going to have that on there. It's going to have available property. It's going to have demographic information. It's going to have tax uh, information. Uh, just kind of marketing showing how it's beneficial to be here in Oregon City. Uh, it's short, sweet, to the point brochure. So that something like be. how to do business in Oregon City or how to... Right. That's right. cool. That'd right. be very cool. So. I was recently um, using Oregon Prospectors to shop for a leasing, a leased industrial property and uh, it was great. It had it populated so much stuff and what was unfortunate was a lot of times there was more information that it didn't have. So for instance, you'd see a property was listed by so-and-so associates and it'd be like, well, I don't know how much it is, I want pictures in the inside and stuff, and so you, I would then Google them, mm -hmm. go to their site, and find all the information about the property. And it, it would have been much easier if there was the link. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a great idea. That's good feedback. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'd just like to throw out a, uh, a few observations. I, I, I've, I'm not a native Oregonian, but I've lived here for 35 years. And uh, I look at uh, the city of Oregon City, uh, you know, it has some assets that are, are built in that, you know, a city can't just buy. They're, you know, they've got a river running through the city, basically. And that's, that's a, uh, you know, that's a uh, resource and, and we have falls that are right there uh, and you know people drive miles and miles and miles to see waterfalls so we've got one right here I think it's uh, the second largest west of the Rockies from yeah you know we, we've got uh, some uh, what, what I would consider uh, resources that should be attractive to visitors uh, we have uh, a history uh, you know you can't buy history history is made and we ha have a history of this being the end of the Oregon Trail, and uh, ironically, I, you know, I, I see the uh, uh, interpretive center uh, that was built what 20 some years ago, 25 years ago, uh, as as basically a failure. It, it didn't create the energy that was anticipated, and I'm not exactly sure why. But I, I look at other cities. Uh, you look at Leavenworth, and they, they kind of created an artificial environment there, but it's been very successful. And it has to do with, you know, creating that energy of uh, a destination place where they have festivals and they have activities and lots of things, and kind of an ambiance. Uh, you know, Solvang in California has the same type of thing, that people go there because it's a destination. And it, it just seems like with the terrain and the history and the, the river that we have here and other assets as well that this would be a natural place to be a destination place for people to go to and uh, you know you, you go downtown uh, Oregon City and it, it just doesn't have the energy of some of these places that become a, a destination place. All right, well I think um, you know that that's one of the focus areas is, is kind of Having that 24-hour downtown, that, that thriving downtown, I think that's a very important component. Um, I think downtown needs to be a destination. I think one of the big uh, elements that's lacking in downtown is a residential component. I think if you mm -hmm. end up, if you uh, can achieve a live-work situation in a downtown, that's going to do much to, to improve that lifestyle, to improve that livability. Foot down. traffic. Yeah. Transit-oriented development. Well, there's, there's not, it's not for lack of opportunities, it's for lack of, as you know, not parking, lack of dollars for upgrades to partially unreinforced masonry buildings or other stuff because almost all those buildings, if you know, know the history downtown, the proprietors lived upstairs. Well, I think we're on, on the cusp of something really good because we've got these programs to um, revive some of our buildings. Wow, I must have said the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> it got brighter all the time. I think we're also getting some tans here. <laughs> 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 nice timing. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, you know, you, you look at you look at the. Uh, <laughs> It's almost uh, like it was like that halo went on. Yeah. <laughs> you look at the Blue Heron site, and we, we took a tour down there, what, two months ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the opportunities that I saw there to make that really an anchor for downtown Oregon City uh, with the potential for different uses, lots of different uses, including residential or light industrial. And uh, the one thing that uh, ever since I've lived here, that I, I've always felt like was really an un, underutilized asset was the river. If somehow that site would uh, allow public access to view the falls, perhaps uh, create a outdoor uh, plaza or uh, eating opportunities or something that would enhance that to become a, a destination point instead of just having a viewpoint up on the cliff, but a place where you could actually uh, kind of interact with the river. I think that'd be very helpful. Well, I agree. I think that is uh, such a unique site, such a unique opportunity for any city to have a site like that in their city. And whatever we do there, I think it has to be done right. It's got to be done right. We get one chance at this. Um, so I, you know, we'll be, I'll be working with Tony. We'll be looking at that very carefully. It would be really cool proceed. is if we could get the falls to back the way it used to look. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that that concrete slabs now you're, there. That's now you're really dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, well, I know, but I mean, it's, and you know, when people think of going to see a falls, right. that's yeah, that's awesome. not quite it. I mean, right. it's and, cool. And, and when that would be awesome. Have you ever been that. on the the bell of the falls and taken the the little tour boat down and they take you almost literally? I mean, you got to have gear on because yeah. you're going to get wet, but. It's much cooler down there than it is to kind of look at it from the top. I took the jet boat ride one time, and they take you right oh, yeah. down to and the, then base they get of the you falls, wet. and and it's it's pretty cool. The courageous, but uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I've I've uh, seen some pretty uh, cool uh, developments in a, a situation that I'd say is comparable, and one in particular <coughs> is uh, in Vancouver, B.C. at Granville Island, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. it was just basically an industrial place and they've converted at least uh, maybe half of that island into public space that they've got a public market and restaurants and then a lot of artisan uh, uh, places where people are creating things and you know those kinds of things here could I, I, I just think really energize that downtown Oregon City area. Yeah. And I, I think we're 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 on the cusp of something when I was gonna say, you know, we're we're We've got the facade improvement program, we've got the rehab program, and we've got interest in the creative type of, of, of businesses that are looking I, at Oregon City. I'm seeing that. I've seen that since I've been here. Um, it's, it started, I think, with, with Funnel Box and, and what they do. But I know of others that are looking at this area, too. Um, it, it's, it's, prime, uh, it's a prime opportunity for, for young startup creative companies mm -hmm. uh, to take over some of these, these spaces that we have downtown. And I think that's something that we need to, to, to keep track of and, and to try to incorporate into our, our city. So you're looking at, at trying to continue to promote the incubator type <coughs> business where somebody, you know, they're looking for inexpensive space, they don't need a lot of TIs, and they just... <laughs> like to try to make it easier for those companies to come, come in. in. Yeah. 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 Great. Thank you very much. Okay, sure. Thanks, Thank sir. you. So how do you see the Planning Commission interacting with your work to the degree that we have some responsibilities within the comprehensive plan to deal with Goal 9, economic development, the whole sort of little basket there? And, and if you haven't completely haven't thought about that, that's perfectly okay. I wasn't yeah, expecting yeah. The, an answer. but. It's, it's something I, I have been thinking about. Well, I'm, I think that's an important thing uh, to think about, um, and that's something that I, I will think about because I think that's important to, to stay in coordination, And uh, but that will have to be uh, more to come, I think. And, and it may be another presentation where once that, some of that kind of starts panning out and, and coordination is needed, I'll come back and, and kind of give you that presentation see how we can or we could just have a conversation without a presentation <laughs> I like presentation <laughs> <laughs> we could do that we can have just, some conversation. just going back to the history stuff 
um, a lot of this, this is just a small thing, but a lot of folks back east and down south are doing what are called heritage trails. Um, in Nash there, there's one in Nashville, there's one on women's suffrage, there's one in the Civil War, and there's all sorts of different. And so they basically link all of these different horse historic sites together through a trail, and they have the you know the reader boards on each venue, and um, they sometimes get involved with um, the Chamber of Commerce or some of the business community so that people, when people come to do the Heritage Trail, they'll have lunch and do all that other kind of stuff. So it's, again, it's just a small, to be just a small component of, right. you know, a larger, right, right. larger plan. Okay. Okay. I, I, I really like the, the, your approach, and I like the fact that you're willing to integrate non-business people into the into a lot, it's a lot of what you're doing because I think sometimes there's a little bit of a collective that goes there, and so you're you're while it's business, you're continually talking to just business people, and you know on the other side, flip side, you know there's the consumer side, and I I really appreciated the fact that the um, Main Street had sent out a survey to ask people about you know, where they shopped and their shopping habits. And I think it's really important to really continue to promote not only the economic gardening, but as much as we can to continue to promote that shopping locally within our trade area really helps maintain those businesses, strengthen those businesses. And I haven't lived in Oregon City as long as Charles has, but you know, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't hear somebody, oh, gee, I wish so-and-so was still here, or, gee, do you remember when so-and-so's business was still here? And y you kind of talk to people about that, and you say, well, did it's sorry, you're sorry that they're gone, but did you shop there? You know, did you, did you bypass going to the local bakery to go down to Fred Meyer to buy your pie instead of going to your local bakery? And we have two now on Main Street, and you know, I if you know if I, I'm a big promoter, and I tell you I could go broke bringing goodies into my office from our local bakeries, and I had to finally just put a stop to it because they, they were they were spending all my money. And they'd say, "Oh, could you bring in some of those?" Uh, you know, so I said, "Well, maybe I need to put a collection thing on my desk for people to do that." But I mean, it's I can't emphasize enough how important that is, and in, in the chamber. Um, has done some of it. Main Street, Oregon City is doing more of it, but it just seems like people just don't understand what the impact is. And I, I would constantly talk about this when people would say, oh, Blue Heron is so smelly. And I said, Blue Heron, or publishers are going back even further, I said, those people have family wage jobs. They can buy houses. They can buy cars at, you know, Weiler Chevrolet down the street or you know, you can name off some more car dealers than I can. Mm. You know, you can go here and they can do this, and they keep that money in the community, and it's really, <laughs> really important. Right. And people somehow don't understand that kind of connection. You know, it, it's my goal to um, uh, keep that local connection and and to make. Uh, you know, Oregon City, to help make Oregon City not only a destination for tourism, that's one component, uh, but a destination uh, to do business and, and to live here. Um, it, it's one thing to make a strong effort to try to recruit folks to come mm -hmm. in and do business here in the city. You get, I think you got to make them want to come, come here. here. Yeah. Um, uh, so that, that, that's the philosophy that mm -hmm. I, I practice by, and that's, that's one I hope to follow here while I'm with the city. Doesn't so. Oregon City have that? policy that they that the city itself it, it keeps its money locally tries to use vendors that are local and and I thought that the chamber was trying there, to there's do a group there's a group uh, by local group here in right. Oregon City I'm actually going to be meeting with them next week because I know uh, that you know I was thinking of just something that had occurred that I wasn't aware of until I started working in economic development was that um, Jim Kelly the former or actually still is the CEO, but he said the reason he located where he is is because he can get his paper supplies down the street, he can get this component down the street, he can get that component down the street, so his suppliers were, were within four to five blocks of where he located, and that was real important to him. And so he felt that keeping you know, his dollars 
within his own business community was really critical. And once he explained that, and this has been like 15, 20 years ago, I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty awesome that they've made that commitment to do that. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. you very much. Tony, you have some information for us? Yeah, we have Laura is going to present some information about the transportation system plan update that she is working on with Nancy Crushar and a larger team. You know, Pete, if you keep sitting down there, we're going to make you part of the group. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> He was too quick to see I, I noticed that, Charles. <laughs> He's a volunteer now. <laughs> Excellent. That's how I put the bottom line on the budget. <laughs> I think you might want to retract. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you know, we are um, starting the process of updating our transportation system plan, which is this thing right here. Um, our transportation system plan is a basic guideline to Oregon City and how we get around. Um, we are trying to update it. It was originally adopted in 2001 and hasn't been updated comprehensively since then. Uh, we're looking to find a balanced transportation system so that you could walk around Oregon City, get goods around Oregon City, bike around Oregon City, and drive around Oregon City um, in an efficient and effective way. We want to make sure if there's a place that you want to go, you can get there easily and try and figure out where our systems and our gaps in our system currently are and see if we can put them on a list to replace those gaps. So what we're doing is a, it's a multiple stage process, but essentially we want to figure out what can we approve around Oregon City. So that includes obviously if there's a poor intersection that we could improve or there's a place where maybe a, a pathway just stops for a short amount of time and you can you can see the other side you just can't get there um, looking at our street designs do we want to change our street widths do we want to have green streets um, anything at all you see in Oregon City how we get around where bus stops are located should we reevaluate where those transit lines are? Should there be more? Is it in keeping with our zoning? Um, speaking of zoning, how close to your house can you get a cup of coffee or pick up a gallon of milk? Should we reevaluate places in the city if they're underserved? Um, so we're looking at both physical changes of the city and then also whatever means to get things in an easier, closer, more efficient way. Um, so why are we updating the TSP? Because there have been a few updates to some larger documents, our state, metro, um, you can see them listed on the slide above. But also we want to make sure that we always look forward. Since this wasn't done and this was completed in 2001, we want to figure out what projects we've completed since then, what our new problems are, or opportunities for improvements and make sure that we have um, increased convenience and availability for alternative modes. So how can we get around easier? Maybe we don't have to use a car. Maybe if we don't use a car as much, we don't have to do so many improvements and uh, we can reduce our um, uh, VMT or automo automobile miles traveled. So, the city was awarded a grant from ODOT. Um, it was for $214,900. The city pitched in another $30,000. So for about $250,000, we'll be updating this document. It's gonna take over a year long process. Um, there was a bid process and DKS and Associates won as our consultant. Um, you can see on the slide, there's a list of their consultants, um, their sub-consultants. We're at the very beginning stages of our process. We've organized our groups. We're starting to, to sort of gather our information um, and we'll be moving forward um, with larger public involvement in the next week, um, as you'll be seeing in this presentation. We're setting up two committees. One is a technical advisory team and the second is a stakeholder advisory team. 
So these two teams are going to watch over our project um, in conjunction with our TAC, our Transportation Advisory Committee, which is currently existing in Oregon City. And the technical advisory team will consist of Metro, ODOT, Gladstone, DLCD, Fire District, TriMet, Housing Authority, OC Garbage. We're looking at more technical um, members, Willamette Pedestrian Coalition, Bicycle Transportation Alliance, Oregon Trucking Association, so they can look at the technical aspects of, say, if we're doing new street design standards or something like that. You know, can garbage trucks actually make those corners? And, and can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why would we be including Portland groups in our... I, I'm, I'm not saying I have anything against them. I'm just curious why we would include the Willamette Pedestrian Coalition when they are... They focus in Portland, but they actually review... Um, they review TSPs outside of Portland as well, and we don't really have a lot of pedestrian groups or walking groups in Oregon City that we could find representation for. Does it so, have to be a group? Well, we also have positions for open committees and things like that, but we really wanted to make sure that pedestrians have some sort of voice in this process, that we do talk about, you know, what are our streets with and can people cross those appropriately and where are the real systems that are the gaps in our system for pedestrians to walk around and the Willamette Pedestrian Coalition does have an experience reviewing TSPs though they are focused on Portland they do look at other suburbs as well. I was just thinking of at least a half a dozen people I know in this community that are what I would consider to be reciferous walkers that might be totally appropriate for something like that and would have more of an Oregon City perspective. We would love to have them as well, actually. Just don't tell them I gave, gave you their names. <laughs> Let I'll, me get back to that in I'll do it just off the record. one second. We would love to have as many people as possible. So this whole process, we're looking to try and include as many um, views on Oregon City, as many people as many experiences of people have as Oregon City as possible. So we're picking a wide range of, in this case we're talking about technical people for our technical advisory board, but we'll also have stakeholder committees. We have tons of open positions for anyone at all who wants to participate. And I'll show you a little bit of our website where we already have maybe 25 or 30 comments from just the general public. We have a really great interactive mapping system that you can see where anyone could say, I have a problem walking to school at this specific location. So, so that's our technical advisory team. Uh, our stakeholder advisory team is a little bit broader. It has um, CIC, school district, planning commission, which I'll get to in a minute as well, um, historic review board, college, chambers of commerce, a um, couple property developers like ICON, Craig Danielson, um, the hospital, we're finding a representative for them as well. So just various people. And in that case, we have as many open positions, really, as there's need for. Um, so anyone in the public can join these teams. Uh, the public, again, is a large component of this. Uh, you probably want to know what our process is. So this document's really big. And it has a lot. It's very complex, and it has a lot of parts to it. So in order to make this update as smooth as possible, we broke down the process into 12 manageable pieces. So we'll start by looking at what are our framework, what are our requirements, how have things changed. For example, we now have more requirements on street connectivity that we never had before. You know, How are we out of compliance in those regards? Um, and then as we go through the process, we'll look at where our our existing conditions, how do we compare on what we should be, what are our funding assumptions, so say we have this list of projects that we'll compile, how much money are we going to have to, to do as many projects as possible, and how are we going to rank these projects, what criteria are we going to use. So these are the 12 memos that we'll be creating. Each of the 12 memos will be posted on our website, and actually a couple of them already are. So once they're created from our technical team, they immediately get posted on our website. Then they will get sent out, an email will get sent to our TAC, our Transportation Advisory Committee, directing them to the website 
to read the documents and make comments. Once we've taken those comments, then we'll send them to both the technical team and the stakeholder advisory team. So TAC's going to do the first sort of review just to make sure that our project team didn't miss anything large or um, any major problems with those reports. And then their comments are getting posted online next to the document. So it'll be the original document and then everyone's comments on those documents posted online for everyone to read. And what's the opportunity for the... The public can do it too. They no, can part... No, not every public is online and are these documents going to be posted at the library so at least there's other places that people can have access to them? You know what, we had not thought about posting them at the library but that's a really good suggestion and I mean not we'll posting them online at the library but maybe right. having a binder that if yeah. you want to look at it you have to check it out you know so that you can see what's happening and stuff gets added to it on a regular basis. That's a really good idea. We'll have it obviously in our planning department and Public Works will have it as well. Um, but we'll, we'll, we can make a copy available at the, at the library for people to look at. So all comments will get funneled to us whether they give us a hard copy and we can put it online. But online you'll see <coughs> original documents going through this process, everyone's comments on those documents. And, and so you can participate at any point. Um, so once we get everyone's comments on all of the 12 tech memos, then we'll incorporate them into a cohesive document. And then technically we'll start our legislative process. So the Planning Commission will review the TSP update via a legislative file. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of draw a line in the sand after all the public involvement is done and then restart a new public involvement process through the legislative file. Um, and then you'll get to vote on it and then it will go to the city commission after that as well, which will result in adoption of the document if everyone um, chooses to approve it. Do you guys have any questions on this process? So, so it's so supposed to be as transparent as possible. <coughs> Anyone could comment. The public can comment. These groups are just people who are said they would comment and they're bound to comment but everybody else in the public can comment as well. And do they have to say, have, I mean these aren't going to be anonymous comments are they have to say who they are? You do have to register oh, on the website. Um, I hate that. You know if you want to make up a fake name you can yeah, probably I mean, do that but you do have to register yeah, on the I website. I don't like post. the ones where you get these comments and it's you know five on the avenue it's, it's like you keep, there needs to be some contextual r mm -hmm. relationship about because all the comments are valid, but mm -hmm. you know if they if they can't post a comment and say who they are, then to me there's a little bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. So what about uh, any uh, many presentations or updates to neighborhood associations? Yes, we have. Which I'm sure you've already thought of. We have a plan. We have a public outreach plan. We've already been to maybe five or six public meetings. Um, we'll continue to do more in our, we have contractual obligations to do at least three open houses um, for just the project alone. But we'll also be checking in with you just to let you know what we're doing and the city commission as well. Um, we have plans to send out notices in all water bills that go out from the city at least four times and we will um, work with different associations, Chamber, Clackamas County, to get the notice that there is a TSP to large employers and things like that as well. You mentioned the uh, website for this uh, TSP. Is that on the Oregon City City website? Yeah, tomorrow we are starting our more aggressive ad campaign. Um, but there is a link to it currently. It's octransportationplan.org. So it's a separate website. Mm hmm So it's? octransportationplan.org. I'll show you through it when we're um, done with this presentation as well. I think the question was if you went to Oregon City's homepage, is there a link? You could this? link to it from our homepage. It's just not on our homepage. homepage yeah. what, mm -hmm. what about possibly getting uh, other organizations like the Chamber of Commerce uh, for example, uh, to add that link to their website. 
we are trying to get um, things like Clackamas County and, and different agencies to have a link to their website um, as well. Yeah, it seems like the more exposure you get, the more um, you're going to get more interest mm -hmm. and exposure and comments back mm -hmm. from the public. Also, a Facebook, Twitter, um, post posters around the city, I mean, even on trails and things like that, so people actually riding a bike on a trail or walking on a trail can see it. So there's different avenues that we've um, will move forward with our campaign. So I'm recruiting one primary person, one alternate for our SAT stakeholder advisory team. There are four meetings that will occur. There may be more, but they'll probably only be just four because a lot of this work you're going to do at home by yourself. It's more independent work. You read the tech memo and post your comments. So the meetings will start maybe at the end of February, beginning of March, we'll have our first meeting. Um, the meetings will be two hours long and they'll be from five to seven, only four times if that makes it more enticing. Is this picture from Oregon City? No, <laughs> it's a generic one. We can only get that many people to show up. <laughs> I'm sure we will. It'll be a big hit. So change that one on the front that you had of the suburban house and put. Uh -huh. <laughs> just go out and take a picture of one of our historic houses. <laughs> that would be more indicative of Oregon City. <laughs> so um, we talked about your role um, in this process. At the end of this meeting, I'm hoping that you guys can kind of talk amongst yourself and agree on the primary person and the alternate person. If you would all like to be a part of the process, again, we have many open positions so we can accommodate anyone who has any interest whatsoever. Whether you're planning commissioner or you're just a citizen of Oregon City, we want your opinion. And if you want to be in a group, we have a place for you. Um, we talked about public involvement a little bit um, already. I'll go to our website in just a minute. We had um, an interactive comment map which went live today. Um, and I'll show you our comments that we've received and added to the map. Um, let's see. So here is our website, octransportationplan.org. Um, we have a variety of posters that that we'll be putting around the city. Um, we've had them in a couple meetings so far, and it just gives a brief description of what is a TSP and what do we want to know. So even if you don't know what a TSP is, you could probably tell me a location that you think is really congested or a place where there should or should not be a stop sign. Um, if you go to the about, we have a summary of all the tech memos um, and additional project information. The draft TSP is where the SAT members will be directed to go to review. So we have draft tech memo one, two, and three already on here, even though we haven't started the project or the process yet. We, we've started to develop the project, the documents, so we've placed them online for comment. So here's our draft tech memo and for each of the tech memos we'll have a, you know one or two paragraph summary so depending on how tricky the and how much technical data is in all of these you'll have a quick shot of what the what's in each draft tech memo and what we anticipate the problems to be or things that people really need to pay attention to so if you're just nice. reading through real quick at least pay attention to these parts um, so then at the bottom of the page you can create a post in a blog form or you can go upload your own documents if you print it write your comments on it you can upload your own or however you want to give us comments you can upload pictures to the website documents to the website whatever you want to do um, we have news a question of the month so each month we have questions um, such as I'm sorry we're still on news um, let's see, November was, is there an intersection you think needs to be improved? And two people logged into the website and 
gave us two intersections they thought needed to be approved. Uh, get involved page is where anyone could come to the website, give comments. You can see I'm still scrolling. So these are all the comments that have been submitted so far. It's in a blog form. And so you can submit a comment and then you can reply or you can comment on somebody else's comment if you want to start a discussion. Um, this is our interactive comment map, which we're quite proud of. Um, so all of these symbols are comments that have been submitted. Um, so since it came up today, we took all the comments that were submitted that were location specific and put them into our interactive map. Here I can give a thumbs up, thumbs down, if I think a comment is good or not. And then you can click on the topic and read the specific comment. So in this case, this person um, is looking for a crosswalk because when they go jogging, that's terrific. Traffic is, oh, is bad. That's, that's yeah. totally true. So, Fill in the blank about wherever you want to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's different one. There's different comments. Um, you can filter for bike comments, automobile. So people have different comments on all sorts of things. This one is on signal timing along 2.13 in the morning when they leave for work or coming home. So any comments at all, this is a great place to submit anything that you maybe think of and you don't really know who at the city to tell that there's something that an opportunity for improvement this project is the place to do it because we'll take all of those comments and all of those and sort of rank them and figure out what can we do something about you know we could put them in a CIP we can rank those projects we can figure out what we have funding for or maybe it's an easy fix and a public works can just go down there and change right, call the county signal timing and have them fix that right now so anything at all related to transportation whatsoever this is a great place to, to submit your comments. So here's our website again, octransportationplan.org. There's other documents and photos, and you can upload whatever you want if you find a nice picture of a nice streetscape or a green street or something that you like. Or feel free to upload. Speeding or <laughs> speeding. And actually, there's an app. There's an app on your phone that you can submit comments to Oregon City, and we've linked to that as well. So you can go on your smartphone and take a picture of something that maybe is maybe it's the Warner Milne project that you really like um, and you can take a picture of it and upload it directly to this website as well hmm. or is that the same as OC requests or is it that is through OC requests okay. mm -hmm. and that's um, the, uh, or if you have a picture on your computer you can upload it directly through the website um, so at this point we are looking for one alternate and one primary to represent the Planning Commission on our stakeholder advisory team. And again, there's only four meetings and your obligations include reading 12 tech memos and submitting comments on those or posting them online. The $64,000 question is it depends on <coughs> what night it is going to be on or it is a daytime meeting? We, well, so the technical advisory team will meet from 3 to 5, and the, the stakeholder advisory team will meet from 5 to 7 on whatever night that we choose. We haven't picked any nights yet. We'll probably send out an email to try and figure out what works best for everyone on those committees. The committees are pretty much set. We're just missing a representative from you. We'll be at our NRC on Wednesday to get someone from there. So we're pretty much there. Um, we don't have the specific times yet, but if, if your primary person can't go, your alternate can go, but you can still get voice all your comments in on the website as well. What day of the week is the meeting going to be? We have no idea. We'll That's just, what I was just saying. That we'll just figure out what works best for most people. That's, that's my favorite answer is it depends. But we'll be after five for the stakeholder committee. 
it seems to me you're going to have a hard time adjourning one at five and starting the other one at five. There might be a little buffer time in there. I would, <laughs> I would think you'd want to just catch your breath. So, um, if we want tentative people, we could do tentative people. <laughs> it's a really She's exciting project. I know. I, it, I think, <laughs> like I said, it, it's I'm, I'm interested in it, but we're doing really great things. I, I know it sounds fabulous, but there are certain nights I'm just committed right. and I can't say yes, I'm going to do it, and, and then you I, say I, I would it's say going to be on X night. For for me, without knowing date and time, I, there's no way I can uh, make any kind of. Commitment. I can do just about any night except for Wednesdays. Okay. Guess you're it. I can put you down, and then okay. you can just be tentative, and then mm -hmm. when we pick the times, if it doesn't work, you can switch among yourselves. Okay. You don't have to uh, necessarily vote on it or anything. Since it's you can be primary. So if four of us yeah. show up at one of these things, that's not going to constitute a meeting, that. is it? As long as it's <laughs> the planning commission. Exactly. Yeah. Hard, I don't know. Wednesdays are bad for me, too. You're not yeah. Yeah. I would, I'd be right. to be okay. an alternate yeah. citizen. Yeah, Wednesdays are horrible for me mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So maybe... Paul could be primary and Zach could be alternate or Sometimes something. Sometimes meetings on Tuesday nights. Mm. Yeah. Great. We'll send you an email tomorrow. <laughs> for for people who are already yeah, overcommitted, it's hard to read the transcript. another night. I know. We love our volunteers here. You guys do such a good job. We try and get you on every committee we can. There's enough meetings. I'm willing to do it. With Any other questions for Laura? Trying to get from Portland to here. Okay. Are we done? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Tony, you have one more item for us. Just a couple uh, updates. Uh, the Planning Commission applications, uh, the uh, submittals are, will be closing on January 17, 2012, and we'll put together a selection committee. It'll include the mayor, I believe, last, and then we'll, we'll set that up and hopefully get that last seat filled uh, here in the near future. Um, you may be aware um, the City Commission is taking applications for the vacated uh, city Commission seat. Uh, they're also holding interviews, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure the exact dates, but they had three uh, forwarded applications. So do I. For some, I think it's earlier tomorrow I think afternoon. A work session tomorrow. Uh, for to re for the park place position on the Urban Renewal Commission. So um, those City Commission will be moving forward with that. Um, Pete has a meeting with the Natural Resources Committee. Uh, so we've got that committee up and running. Uh, they'll be working on their selecting their chair, vice chair, and setting out a scope of work. Uh, we did give them some of the goals that we did have previously, but then they'll have the opportunity to review those and expand on those as well. Would you send us, a, a, just as an FYI, a copy of that? Of their work plan once they get it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Pete, you make a note of that. Yeah. Um, the regular meetings will be the second Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m. Here. Here. Yep. So. Library board meets at 5.30, but we think they'll conclude their business in time for us. So. Or you'll just kick them out, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and they will have their agendas published a week prior, just like Planning Commission does. So. Um, on the 21st, Saturday this month, uh, we have the City Commission retreat. They'll be going over their goals and objectives for the upcoming fiscal yeah. year. Um, so we'll be working through that as well. We've got quite a few that are holding over, such as Blue Heron, Willamette Falls, uh, South End Concept Plan. Uh, Pete's been working on it. hope to get that going pretty quick here. We've um, got the Transportation System Plan. So um, there's quite a few that are, that are holding over, and we're going to continue to work on as we move forward. Um, probably seen in the paper concerning Blue Heron and Willamette Falls. Uh, Metro did submit a letter of intent by the bid date. Uh, did not include a purchase price for the property. There's still some unknowns and some negotiations that need to occur. We continue to have those conversations with the bankruptcy trustee. Um, but at this point, there is no offer on the table other than to continue working with one another uh, to try and get a better understanding of the of the property, what the uh, liabilities are and, and whatnot on the Do site. Do you have a sense, or did they say if any, how many other interests are out there? On December 31st, um, my, the building official, Tom Hosey, who I had hired about a year and a half ago, uh, had an opportunity for another job uh, being the assistant uh, public works director, building official for the city of Houston, uh, fourth largest city in the country. Kind of hard to yeah. get on him too hard about taking that opportunity. 
Uh, so right now I have uh, Scott Linfesti is appointed as the interim uh, building official um, until we move forward with uh, uh, filling that position. Is that going to be a uh, public uh, advertisement? Uh, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an in-house advertisement at this point. Um, and, um, do you have a lot of building officials in-house? In <laughs> oh, you know, we, we, we had one that, su that submitted and, and did really well during the last round. So you're uh, doing internal right. recruitment? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, with that, that's about oh, all the Oh, no, there's, there's good news. I'm blanking on good news. Well, the good news is, let me put on my National Trust hat, is that the National <laughs> Trust awarded the City of Oregon City a grant for the Ermitinger House, which I am very excited about. Okay. So that's that's helping. And it's it's around, what was it, 35? Anyway, they're the only ones that got the full amount. I forgot the amount. But there were a number of other, Clackamas County got a small grant to do their geocaching tour, and uh, LeGrand got... City of Legrand got one for the the Liberty Theater that they have, and I think there was one in Corvallis. So it was nice. And uh, Bosco Milligan Foundation got one as well to do a seismic review of their property. So, but we got the biggest. Hmm. City of Oregon City got the biggest, and we're waiting, I guess, to hear on the grant with the uh, community development uh, grant. grant funds for the county. CBDG Bounty. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Christina Robertson Gardner has been working closely with Scott. Archer and Denise Kai and um, hiring consultants for the architectural engineering drawings for the Ermitting our house. So they're, we're making progress on, on that facility. Yeah, that money bundled with the other money is going to go a long way. Definitely. That's how those grants work. You get one and then they see that you've got another one and then they say, okay, well, I'll pull my money it's and a viable project. You're packaging yeah. them up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that was very exciting. That was that was the best news I had on Friday. <laughs> Sorry? It's hard to line up all the timelines with all those grants. Yeah, different ones. Yeah, yeah. But you just keep moving ahead and yeah. getting the getting the dollars going. Any oh. other business this evening? Actually, one more announcement. As a part of the drug handle project at two two thirteen in Washington, we have announced a closure date for Highway two thirteen. Highway will be closed from Washington Street to the. The interstate so you won't be able to get on or off the interstate and go down 213 you can go up 213 and, and go to Clackamas River Drive or Washington Street you just couldn't go beyond no tell them not to go up Washington Street please <laughs> well actually um, we we're starting an aggressive media campaign and the point of the campaign is to tell people to stay away from Oregon City during this four-day closure and then come back when it's all when it's all done uh, the date is announced for March 22nd at 8 p.m., which is going to be the Thursday of spring break, of the starting of spring break. And um, that might be a good Doug recommended to have Mike just <laughs> it'll, yeah. it'll be reopened up at the latest at um, Tuesday at 4 a.m., which is the March 27th. So, not trying to make this really personal or not, um, what is the city's mitigation plan for? Mm -hmm. trying to mitigate some of the impact because I, I had some very I had some very productive conversations with Nancy Crashour when Singer Hill was closed and mm -hmm. I can tell you from somebody that lives there it was not pleasant to live on that street during mm -hmm. that particular time we started over a year ago um, I mean I knew it was coming so I mean it right. was, I'm not surprised but I just want to make sure that you know, we've got increased police enforcement. We've got, I mean, there's all sorts of things. I mean, people just drove like, politely say, maniacs. Yes, we have um, a variety of things that we're doing. So there's 65,000 cars per day that travel through that intersection. Um, so we started a year ago to try and figure out a t date which would be the least impact to the city um, over a weekend closure as you know county offices are closed that Friday happens to be a furlough day as well um, for the county or for ODOT for ODOT for the state um, and the county most of them are closed County's anyway closed on Fridays on Friday. okay, and the community college it's their lowest um, class enrollment day it is one of the lowest days for, for Home Depot and Metro and all these different um, agencies as well we've talked to the school district and they're 
talking about potentially closing the school down on that Friday since they have a lot of teachers that come in from out of the city as well. We're expecting gridlock or a catastrophe um, yes. throughout the entire city. I can just see it now. Um, it'll be catastrophe. Breaking. Breaking yes. news. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I would kind of echo what uh, Denise was saying. Uh, a couple of days when Singer Hill was closed, it was like gridlock trying to get up the hill mm -hmm. yep. in the evening. It was just unbelievable. There was Nobody was moving. I would expect that. Um, what about trucks? What about deliveries? Because that, uh, to be honest with you, that's my biggest fear, mm -hmm. is that we're going to have these big Hurkin 18-wheelers trying to come up Washington Street, or I know they mm -hmm. won't try to come up Singer Hill, and that, that just, you know. We're working aggressively with businesses and property owners and in residence as well to to let them know our schedule so that we don't have trucks. ODOT's not <coughs> doing any large trucks, um, any permits, which are supposed to have a permit to move large trucks over 213 or anywhere around Oregon City during that time period. Um, we have a truck route that the trucks are supposed to go, and it's basically not going to move. It's going to be extremely lengthy delays, multiple hour delays. Where so is it going to go? Here truck, and we're also working with the Oregon Trucking Association, Association. as well. So truckers should be aware that they should go the day before, a couple days before, and stores should stock up as well. We also um, were setting up a incident command center, emergency operations center in the Home Depot parking lot, one of those um, incident trucks you see on the movies. Um, ODOT will be sitting with us in the truck the whole time. They'll be... So Comet will be in town? Yeah, we've worked with... Yep, we're, like, we're trying to get... Um, tow trucks in Oregon City so they don't have to go to Oregon City. Um, we staff will be riding bikes to get around. I'd recommend that. Extra tow trucks. Extra tow trucks. We worked with the hospital, the jail extensively. The courthouse is going to be closed down. They haven't scheduled any hearings for that day. So we're trying to lower the amount of people will be in Oregon City as much as possible and encourage people to work from home if they live here. But the, the closure itself will allow us to close the project up six months earlier, and we will we'll keep all the lanes open during the day as well. So we'll have never closed a lane of 213 during the day, and we'll be done six months earlier. The closure will allow us to build that, that bridge you see um, right next to 213 is on tracks, and it's going to be slid into place. And that's what the closure is for. So we need all the all the lanes to slide it. Is it all coming there in one piece, and how is it getting there? Yep, it's on. It's there. there it's that structure, the building right next to um, two thirteen. Oh, okay, all I right. saw some it's bridge on. pieces just cool. just kind of out of. That's just it. Like, that's yeah. what I thought it was. I there, said, oh, there's there's the like, pieces of the bridge. Mm -hmm. It's a very gentle slope, and they're just pushing it mm -hmm. into place, then paving yeah. um, within that four day period. Wow. Yeah. So. There's a really cool time lapse yeah, film on the website about it. Yeah. And we're doing, we're filming Different this. Mm -hmm. All the construction is being filmed as well. <laughs> There's tons of mitigation and plantings. I mean, you, you saw it went through the Planning Commission. Yeah, so you can log on to jughandleproject.com, I, mean, I think it is. And then um, you can log on to their construction cam as well. Great. That's it. Well, one of the things that you talk about gridlock on the. Um, trying to get up one place or the other, I literally had to have someone else go stand in the street so I could pull out of my driveway just to get out of my driveway during the closure. I'm, I'm right on Washington Street. I mean, literally, walk out and go stop for a minute just so I could pull out. And I tried parking on the street a couple of days. I couldn't get in. I couldn't get in the car. <laughs> it just—it was just ridiculous. But you know, the the thing that that concerns me the most is that I I really like all the improvements that are on McLaughlin Boulevard, but unlike what happens in Milwaukee, people are speeding up. It's posted at 30, and our new nice improved landscape section and divided section, they just—I mean, it's amazing to me. And all they have to do in Milwaukee is put out the red light van. They've got it posted at 30, and I'm telling you, I drive it every day, and people slow down to 30 miles an hour when they're going through Milwaukee and 
right when the sign changes to 40, that's when they speed up. But Oregon City, it's like they come off of the curve, they come down Main Street light, they hit the 14th Street light, and they are gone. That's, what a good comment for us. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna post, I will post. I wish I had a camera the other day. I was I was actually waiting to turn on to, port, on to 99, and I got the guy's license plate number in a boat. Just, whew, I mean, it was like, and he went right up onto the to 205, and he was gone. I mean, it was. I I've never seen anybody driving that fast, but that's a pretty mm. consistent problem. Okay, are we done? I move we adjourn. Okay. Second. Thank you. We're adjourned.